I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. And it is time to begin what we do every year. That's right, fantasy previews in a nutshell. Now look, I'm going to preface it this way. You want to get the treatise. You want to get the encyclopedia on each team. You go to scoutfantasy.com and you read Sean Childs' outlooks because they are amazing. Okay, they are in-depth and amazing. And I'm not going to lie. They're way better than what I'm doing here. Way better. But maybe you don't have half a century to read it. Maybe you just need the Cliff Notes version. Maybe you just need to hear Dr. Roto tell you, I like him. That's enough for you. If that's what you're looking for, my friends, I got the nutshell series for you. So we're going to start with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And I'm going to run it around the diamond to the outfield, to the pitchers, and maybe I'll give you a minor league or two if I like if I, if I like a guy in a certain team. With the Arizona Diamondbacks at catcher, Alex Avila just signed a two-year deal with the team. Just because he signed with the team doesn't mean that you need to go sign him to your team. Alex Avila is 31 years old, and he is... <laughs> Maybe in a two-catcher league, he's my second catcher. I don't feel warm and fuzzy about it. I didn't wake up this morning going, gee, how do I get Alex Avila on my team? Trust me, that was never said. At first base, possibly my favorite player in all of fantasy baseball. You might like Mike Trout. You might like Nolan Arenado. I like me some Paul Goldschmidt Roto. Love this guy. Power, RBIs, average, and yes, my friends, speed. In the last three years, 21, 32, and 18 stolen bases. I I always equate it to this, right? It's like found money. You're at a bar. You're hanging out with your friends. It's 4 in the morning. You look down. There's a $50 bill. Whoa, good night for you. I feel the same way about Paul Goldschmidt. If he didn't steal bases, I'd still like him. But with 20 stolen bases, I like him even more. If I'm picking top three, I'm going Trout, Altuve, Goldschmidt. Boom. Right there. All day. All day long, I'm liking me some Paul Goldschmidt. So please, draft him whenever you can. You cannot go wrong with Paul Goldschmidt. At second base is Brandon Drury, who, you know, there's just not much I love about this guy. In his last two years... 282 and 267, 16 in home runs, 53 RBIs, 13 home runs, 63 RBIs. I thought he was going to get better, but I think that what, what you see is what you get. This is like a $1 guy at the end of the draft who maybe has upside. He's just not going to be on my team. I don't see him on my team. I don't ever see me looking down a list going, oh, Brandon Drury, great. I mean, maybe if I'm in a 2016 league, I'll look and feel better about it, but I don't. At shortstop, the guy I like to talk about here is Kettle Marte. He's interesting to me. He's got some speed. He's got some speed. So don't be afraid to be looking at this guy. Came over right from Seattle. Hasn't really found his niche yet. But Nick Ahmed can hit. I like Chris Owings, who I'll get to. I'll get to Chris Owings now. Chris Owings is a really good utility player. I like Chris Owings. I do. Second, short, outfield, right? He plays everywhere. But if Kettle Marte can actually hit, he's going to be the shortstop because he's a better defender than Chris Owings. So I like Chris Owings as a util guy, but I I like Marte real late in a draft. You know, round 27, you need a guy. Kettle Marte is my kind of guy. My kind of guy. At third base, I am all in on Jake Lamb. I am. I find in DFS, I play G- Jake Lamb when they're against a righty. I mean, literally, I'm like Peralta, Goldschmidt, Lamb. Lock it in. 
That's what I do on DFS most nights. I look for my Diamondbacks, especially when they're at home. And I'll just put those guys right in my lineup. I love Jake Lamb. He's never going to be a 280 hitter. Right? I don't wake up this morning and go, oh, Jake Lamb's going to hit 280. He's not. He's 250, 260. Best. But he's going to jack 30 home runs. He's going to hit 90 to 100 RBIs. He might steal five stolen, five stolen bases. And I think he's getting better. I do. I, I don't think we've seen him top out yet. But we're close. Right? I, maybe he goes 35 home runs. Maybe he goes 110 RBIs. I think that's there for him. I like this kid. I do. I'm, I'm all in on Jake Lamb. In the outfield, let's talk about one of my favorite players in fantasy baseball, A.J. Pollock. In 2015, when he had 600 bats, he had 20 home runs and close to 40 stolen bases. Hit 315. That's how good he is. Then, of course, he was injured in 2016. I mean, literally had 40 at bats. And then 2017 came back, but he was injured a lot of the season. Right? He had his groin strain, wasn't really stealing a lot of bases, but he still had 14 home runs and stole 20 bases. So here's the deal with A.J. Pollock. You have to be a high-stakes player because you need to have that mentality to draft Pollock. Could Pollock get 15 home runs and 30 steals? Without question. Without any question. But if I told you he'd get 300 at-bats and be injured, there'd be no question about that either. So you've got to really believe in Pollock, which is not an easy thing to do. It's not. Because this guy's always injured. It's not. He's had one great year. You're going to need him to take him in the fourth round if you want him. That might be early for you. Maybe you're risk averse. I say this. Pollock is an example of a winning pick in a fantasy league. Because if he has a good year and he stays healthy and he goes 20 home runs and 40 stolen bases, I'm not going to be shocked. And neither should you be. But you might not have him on your team because you didn't want to, you didn't want to worry about the risk. So that's what we're looking at with A.J. Pollock. Like the guy, don't like the risk. Would I take it? Yes, I would. That's the player I am. David Peralta is another outfielder there. But David Peralta to me is like Brandon Drury with maybe a better average. Peralta will get you 15 home runs, 60 RBIs, 70 some more runs scored, a little, you know, decent average, but is that really great numbers for you? I mean, seriously, in an NL only league, he's fine. He's above average. But in a mixed league, really? Are those numbers helping you out? I don't think so. I think I could get them from anybody. Yes, Manny Tomas, another guy I really don't like very much. He has power, but outside of the power, is he a great player? No. I, I think this team would be better off with Chris Owings playing every day in the outfield. I do. Now, let's get to the pitching staff. I like this pitching staff. Zach Greinke, I don't like, but I, I, I don't want to say that. I like him, but I don't love him. I'm not ever taking Zach Greinke in round three. Not going to be me. He's 34. The velocity seems to be down. The innings have been too high. I can see the cliff coming. Now, maybe the cliff is not this year. Maybe the cliff is next year. But it's coming. And it's coming fast. So I'm not in on Zach Greinke. I'll let somebody else take him. I am in on Robbie Ray. I love me some Robbie Ray. I mean, this guy's getting better. All he has to do is cut down the walks. Still walking too many guys. But he strikes out 3-1. to He had 218 strikeouts two years in a row. You can't teach that. I mean, last year he had 116 hits. That is virtually unhittable. I love this guy. I just don't know where I, how I can draft him and what leagues I can draft him. He does, it's just never going to seem to be on my team, but I like Robbie Ray. Do you know some guys are around for a long time, but they're really not old? Taiwan Walker. Ask yourself this question. How old is Taiwan Walker right now? What did you say, 28? 29? He's 25 years old. He's 25 years old. It seems like he's been around forever. And we're bashing this guy. But you know what? Pitchers start to get better at about 26. I think this could be his year. I think this is a year that I will be in on Taiwan Walker. Now, if the bidding gets too high, I'm out. I'm out. But I'll stay in for a little bit. I like him. I think there's upside there. And in a nutshell, 25 with upside... Count me in. 
So here's the difference between fantasy baseball owners and maybe fantasy football owners or basketball owners. Fantasy baseball owners will look at a guy like Zach Godley and they'll go, wow, 3.37 ERA, 1.14 whip, a lot of strikeouts. I never heard of this guy. I don't think he can do it again. I'm not drafting him. Well, why not? He pitched great last year. Now, I'm not saying that there may not be a little regression. Maybe there will be. But I don't need Zach Godley to throw another good year before I'll draft him. I'm willing to draft him this year. So I think with fantasy baseball owners, don't be, don't be waiting for proof. Sometimes you've got to be a believer. Right? You have to believe. It's in us. Do I think Godly could be good? Maybe he could be Godly. Who knows? But I'm willing to take a chance on him. He pitched well last year. So maybe his ERA is 3.55 instead of 3.34. Okay, big deal. Still a good pitcher. Will he win 12 games? Sure. Maybe he doesn't win 13, he wins 12. Big deal. I'll take him. Let's not be picky. Really, let's not be picky. Now, three guys to look at in the bullpen. First is Archie Bradley. Archie! I like Archie Bradley. I don't think he was ever cut out to be a starter. Put up a lot of home runs, walked a lot of guys, but he always had good stuff. And I think this is a guy, one of two things are going to happen with Archie Bradley. He's either going to be in a really good closer, or he's going to be Andrew Miller. Which means they'll bring him in the seventh inning, eighth inning, whenever they need a couple outs. And they'll leave him in for like an inning and a third. He's got that kind of arm. He is a really good player, and I think that he might be, this might be the last year he's undervalued. After this year, there's no value on him. But I think this year might be the last year you can get him undervalued. Brad Boxberger is very interesting to me. Because this guy, I don't know if you realize this, in 2015, he had 41 saves. That's a big number. And then he's never been right after that. Right, he had groin surgery, he had an oblique issue. He's never been himself. But now he's supposedly healthy, and the Diamondbacks brought him in. So I can see a couple of things happening here. I can see Bradley being the 7th, 8th inning guy, and then they bring Boxberger in for one, one, one inning in the ninth, Or maybe they just bring Boxberger in the 8th inning. I think you don't want to mess with Boxberger. Boxberger's going to get an inning. Will it be the 8th or the ninth? I don't know. I think I would take Boxberger very late in drafts and hope that he gets lucky. Last guy, Yoshihisa Hirano from the RX Buffaloes in Japan. Let me tell you something about these Japanese pitchers. They have funky, funky deliveries, right? Funky. And guys in the major leagues, when they see them the first couple of times, they're like, I can't hit this. These guys throw some nasty stuff. And then when they watch him on tape, and then by like the third time you see him, you start to be able to time it better. But the first couple of times around the league, these guys are lights out. I think Hirano will be the same way. So if I play in the league with holds, I'm in on Hirano. If I'm playing in an NL only league, I'm in on Hirano. If I'm in a mixed league, he's probably like the last round pick, maybe. Do I think he could see saves? Only if Bradley or Boxberger gets injured. If they get injured, Hirano could get saves. If not, I think Hirano is like the 7th, 8th inning kind of guy. That's where he slots in. So in a perfect world of Hirano's pitching 7, Boxberger's pitching 8, Bradley's pitching 9, you win games. You win games. And that's how the Diamondbacks are going to do it. Right? That's how the Diamondbacks are going to do it. I think they're a really good team. I love the pitching staff. When I was going through this team, I found like, you know, Robbie Ray, Walker, Godley, Boxberger, Bradley. There's some names here. I can get I can, I can get with this team. You know, the question will be the outfield. Love Goldschmidt. Love Jake Lamb. Is Pollock the, the table setter? Is Pollock healthy? Is David Peralta capable of raising his game a little bit? Is Chris Owings going to be better than he's been? I like him, but can he do more? We need more out of Chris Owings, not less. So I think the Diamondbacks are on the peripheral of the playoffs. Maybe the the wild card is, it's in the cards for them. It's possible. I could see it happening, but we'll have to see. 
So there's your first in the nutshell series. For more, go to scoutfantasy.com. And if you want to win in DFS, you know where you go? scoutdfs.com. That's where you go. You want to see my man, Fuego Steve. You want to see Jaguar Lou. Willie Walls is hanging out there. Ryan Farrow for golf. My man, Y2 Casey for MMA. You want to win. It's a free seven-day trial. Check us out. If you like what we have going on there, be part of the Scout Army. ScoutDFS.com. All right, time now to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. We're back tomorrow with more previews in a nutshell. This is Dr. Roto saying be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!